In today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that I hear a lot from a lot of programmers, especially new programmers, which is that programming is hard. And it's true. It is true. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what to do about that and, and how you can deal with the fact that programming is inherently hard. It's a difficult thing to do and why it's actually not quite as hard as you think. John Sonnen is here from simpleprogrammer.com. Let's talk about, you know, again, the biggest complaint that a lot of programmers or beginning programmers, people getting into programming give me, which is that programming is hard. What do they mean by that? Well, here's the thing, okay, of all the skills that you could kind of learn in the world, programming or software development is definitely one of the most difficult ones to learn because the learning curve and the ramp is so high, okay? Now, if we just talk about writing algorithms, that's difficult in itself, right? You have to have a certain amount of mathematical ability. Uh, you have to understand logic and you've got a lot to memorize, right? To, to think in terms of, of programming, of abstract thoughts, uh, to be able to translate problems into what essentially equates to e equations and commands and break things down is not a skill that we're all born with. It takes a lot of time, right? Even to learn just one programming language, it's difficult because you have a, a lot of different commands, right? You have to understand what loops are, what conditional statements are, uh, what case statements are in many cases, right? How conditional logic works, right? how to uh, even you know even know how to structure a program at all how do you get input from the user and put output to the user right there's a lot of stuff to know just the basics of a programming language itself compared to a lot of other fields right now <clears throat> i'm not saying that to be a doctor or a lawyer that you don't have to study a lot but a lot of times that knowledge is knowledge that you know that you can acquire, right? Because it's, it's really just a, a, a breath of knowledge. It's not so much the, the skill, right? Because the thing about programming that makes it both interesting and challenging is that it is part science and part art, right? A lot of people try to classify it as engineering, but it's not really engineering, okay? There's not a definite outcome. There's not a definite set of steps. It's not like building a bridge, right? There's a lot more creativity to it, and it's almost like writing to some degree, right? If you write a lot of code, you'll have your own style of writing code, and it will, you know, as you become really good, it, it starts to almost come across like prose, like a poem, like co poetry and, and code, good code, are very similar in, in the way that they express things. So there's a lot of things going on in order to learn programming. Let's say that you wanted to be a web developer today, okay? And I don't mean to discourage you. I'm gonna tell you about some of the ways that we you can get over this and, and give you some encouragement, but I just wanna, I wanna paint the picture. I wanna frame this for you. If you wanted to be a web developer today, what would you need to learn realistically? Okay, you would need to learn a programming language, of, of course, right? Maybe that's JavaScript. Uh, probably you're gonna need to learn more than one if you're gonna do some kind of back-end programming, like let's say that you need to learn C-sharp or Java or Python or PHP, and then you're still gonna need to learn JavaScript in order to create the user interface on the front end. You're gonna need probably some HTML, HTML knowledge, right? You can't get away without that. Okay, you're gonna probably need to understand some of the JavaScript frameworks, things like React or, or you know, any of any of the, like Node.js or any of the kind of frameworks that are, that are being used today. There's a lot of different JavaScript frameworks out there. Okay, you're gonna probably need to know CSS, okay, to be able to style a, a web page. You're gonna need to understand the HTTP protocol to some degree, right? There's a lot of different things that you're gonna need in order to just be a web developer, just to write simple web applications, there's a very, very large learning curve and, and a steep amount of, of knowledge that you need to have just to be functional. With that said, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you guys that programming is hard, but it's not as hard as what you think, okay? So first of all, let's, let's talk about like how you can tackle this challenge. The very first thing I would tell you, okay, is this, and, and if you are an experienced programmer, you're already nodding your head because you already know that this is true, which is that over time what ends up happening as far as understanding how to think like a programmer and how to break down problems and to write code is that eventually it just clicks. Okay, and this happened for me as a software developer when I started out, 
I, you know, I remember reading the C++ book and going through the exercises and going, and I could do the exercises, but it, I just, I couldn't do it without any kind of help. Like I had to, I had to be prompted so much. I, I couldn't think about how to write any code on my own or to solve a problem. And then finally, after some period of time and looking at object oriented concepts and, and, you know, and, and seeing examples, finally it made sense to me and it just clicked. And all of a sudden I was able to do this. I wasn't good at this point, but it did click. What I would tell you guys is this, is that look, it's going to take some time, but you just have to keep at it and you have to keep on going and eventually it will click. And when it does click, then those concepts and everything, you might not be a great programmer, but you will understand. You'll understand the basics of it and it'll it'll be like like speaking in a foreign language and having some amount of fluency, right? There's a point where you have no fluency, no fluency, no fluency. You just know words, you just know phrases, and then there's a point where you cross over and you suddenly have fluency. I mean, you're not you're not talking great, okay? But you can actually speak and you can actually converse and understand things and it's a big breakthrough. And the same thing happens with programming languages and with programming. The next thing I would tell you is that what you need to do is you need to have a plan and a path that you're gonna take, right? I talk about a, a concept I've got on my shirt right now called trusting the process. You gotta trust the process, but you have to have a process. Most people, the reason why they fail is because they don't have a goal that is clearly defined and, and so they're just moving in some direction. If you have a goal, if you know what you're trying to accomplish, and then you start moving in that direction, you come up with a process that will get you there, then you will you will achieve that goal. A great example, a friend of mine, Dan Martell, put a video on Facebook this week of his son learning how to do a backflip, okay? And what it was, it was it was time-lapse video with a little number counter of him trying 260 times. And on the 260th time, he became good enough to be able to do the backflip on the ground without any kind of mattresses or anything, okay? And it only took him 260 tries. That, I mean, that's, that's not bad, right? If you think about it, like, it's just a process, right? And that, that made me think really hard. It's like, wow, I'm not really that far. Any of one of us right now is about 260 flips, tries away from being able to do a backflip from a standing backflip, right? I mean, most of us, right? I mean, obviously, you know, if you're really overweight or something, you might have a problem. But in general, right, the, the, the whole point is that if you think about it, where are you with programming, right? How many practice problems away are you from being able to write an algorithm? How many programming books read away are you from? How many training courses away are you from, you know, being able to accomplish your goal? I try to narrow the, the scope down. I try to tell developers that, hey, look, this is what you want to do. What you want to do is you, you're going to want to pick a specific thing. What kind of developer do you want to be? What kind of programming language? What kind of stack do you want to work on? Okay. And then figure out all the things that you need to learn and start creating something in that, right? I always say you need to learn X so you can do Y. If you don't know what Y is, you're going to have a really hard time not only knowing what X to learn, but learning it because it won't have an objective behind it. You have to be doing exercises that will progress you over time, right? I'm going to go for my run in a little bit. I'm training to run a marathon. I'll be running a marathon in two weeks. And the way that I'm able to do that, even though it seems like such a crazy, I mean, who the heck is going to run for four hours straight? But the way I'm able to do that is because I did progression because I was running one mile and then I was running two and then I was running five. And then some weeks I'd run a seven mile run and then my long run was a 10 mile run. And then pretty soon it was a 20 mile run. You see what I'm saying? It's like you have to have that progression. So it's the same thing. You're solving programming problems. You're solving algorithm problems, right? You're breaking down new problems. You're creating new applications, right? As long as you have progression, you will have progress, right? So you have to have a process and you follow that process. So maybe that's you coding two hours a day, or maybe it's reading a programming book for two hours and coding for two hours, whatever it is, you can develop your system. It could be six hours. It could be, it depends on how much time you have and how much that you want to devote to this. But programming, it, although it's hard to get good at it is not hard. Okay. It just requires you to have a system and to go through. Okay. I'm a big proponent of coding boot camps. Okay. I've had, we've had dev mountain boot camps. We have, I've had different boot camps as sponsors on my YouTube channels and, and whatnot. And I've promoted them because I'm a big fan of it. In fact, I, in my book, the complete software developers career guide, I talk about this all the time. Okay. I talk about using boot camps and I give you some, 
you know, some examples and some, some ways to learn how to program. But a bootcamp is a great resource because it's a path that someone's already taken and they give you step-by-step -step progress that you can follow to get through there, right? There's also the free code camp, right? The free code camp I've talked about before on, on this channel and the other channel and on, on Simple Programmer because it, it's a really good resource, right? It has a progression that you can follow. You just have to have to figure that out. So it, it's okay, I get it. I understand why you guys are saying programming's hard. I agree it, in, in general, in principle, it's hard, but nothing's hard if you break it down into small steps and tackle each one. Everything that I've ever attempted in life, and, and like I said, I when I was doing writing a lot of code and I was trying to learn how to be an iOS developer, an Android developer. That's hard, but I broke it down. I broke it down into simple pieces. I learned the thing, I did the thing, I made the simple app, okay? And then over time, I grew and, and progressed over time. Everything you could say is hard, right? It's hard to walk, okay? It's, it's hard to learn how to walk as a baby. There's a lot of, of things going on, or to ride a bike, but when you break it down and you practice and you keep on making progress, eventually you get there and then it seems easy, right? The stuff that, and, and I, want you, I want to leave you with one last encouragement, one last note. How many things are you doing today that yesterday, you know, five years ago seemed hard or seemed difficult, but now they seem easy to you, okay? If you've developed any kind of skill in anything, whether it be a sport or playing a musical instrument or even beating a video game, you know that at one point it seemed really hard and maybe even impossible, but now it seems easy. The same thing with programming. The, the only difference is that it's easier to get overwhelmed and there's a lot more to know there. And so you have to have a, a real plan that you define out, right? A video game, you can just keep on playing and you'll eventually get better. With programming, you need to have some kind of plan. Like you need to chart a pr your progress and, and your learning. So if you're interested also in, in in finding a group of people that can help answer your questions, that can help uh, help you on your path, that are committed to uh, becoming better programmers, becoming better developers, make sure you check out, go to simpleprogrammer.com and check out the member section. We'll put a link here in the, in the video and in the description. We open it up from time to time and let new members in, but it's a great community and it, it is is probably the place that you should be if you really are serious if you're having problems with programming if you think it's hard and and you need some encouragement because everyone in there will tell you it's hard but they'll also tell you how they made it easy and that they'll give you the encouragement that you can be successful because there's a lot of su successful programmers in there that have gone through this and realized your struggle sometimes just having someone to help you with your struggle is is the thing that takes something from hard to easy when I started running and started competing and started doing lifting and 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 just entrepreneurial stuff with peers that were struggling through the same things, it, it suddenly gave me a lot more encouragement to do what I've been doing here at Simple Programmer and with my businesses and fitness and everything, okay? So go check it out. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. This is gonna be a great resource for you as well as we're gonna be talking about a lot of different topics that relate to a software developer or programmer's life uh, besides programming is hard. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.